Markets are closing slightly down today as Bitcoin and crypto are testing that all important support level that it's been tapping on. So let's take a look at what's going on. And of course, major news continues to be the fallout with FTX, grayscale uncertainty, and Disney has brought Bob Iger back into the picture suddenly uh, to reverse some uh, slippage there in the company. Uh, Coinbase is under pressure with everything that's going on. So we're still waiting to see the real fallout. Is GBT, is the GBTC Grayscale Bitcoin um, Trust under pressure uh, with their uh, declination devaluation that's going on? Are they going to have to sell their Bitcoin in order to uh, redeem investor funds? I don't even know what the deal is with that or how that's structured or set up. So we'll wait and see. But right now, markets are kind of flat. NASDAQ's down about a percent. Uh, 1%, S&P down 0 0.3, uh, Dow Jones 0 0.12, just kind of flat right now. So let's jump into the big news and let's take a look at Bitcoin as it continues to, to tap on that support uh, that it's been landing on around 15, you know, the low end 15.5 to that 15.7 range. Ethereum, uh, same thing, tap it on that uh, 1,000 to 1,100 range, 1,075 to 1,100 to see if it's going to break this level and go in and put that lower low in that we have been looking for. Bitcoin definitely seems like it's on its way there. Ethereum kind of holding up, XRP. Some of the altcoins have already broken that support, uh, double tap that support range and are kind of working their way down. But let's take a look at Bitcoin. This video I did with Gareth Soloway on Friday and um, you know what I was kind of talking about in terms of this 2018 time frame area, and I was in my car and the internet signal wasn't great. And what I was trying to show was, you know, this, this whole situation and area here. And, you know, if you just look at time frames again, past doesn't mean that we're going to repeat it. Past performance, past indicators, fractals, you know, levels, none of that means that's exactly what we're going to experience. But so far, it's pretty interesting uh, because the peak was put in December 2017. And uh, from that that point uh, to the next, you know, final capitulation uh, that occurred in November, Tuesday, November 13th. And then you had this little shelf here where the price kind of fell and consolidated for a little bit. That was around the 18th of November. Then it finally found the bottom December 15th of 2018. So December 2017 was the top. The bottom was December of 2018. Let's go back and uh, look at the date there. That was actually the peak was December 16th of 2017. The bottom was one year later, December 16th of 2018. Pretty interesting. And then from that standpoint, the from the bottom until the recovery was basically 106 days. And that was, that was April the 1st. April Fool's Day is when the market took off uh, the last time of 2019. So it was the 1st, 2nd of April of 2019 from the final bottom in 20, uh, 2018. Then you had that, yeah, really March, I guess you could call it March right here, but that last day was April. So early March, April. So in that time frame is when the next bull market started, or at least the next run started, not full on bull market, because it did have some ups and downs from there. So let's take a look at where we're at this year. So this year, the top was in on, well, that's the Bitcoin hash ribbon indicator. So the top was in on basically November the 9th. And where is November the 9th right here? So right now, there's November 9th right there, bottom one year later. So last in 2017, it was one year. Uh, right now, we're at one year uh, in terms of where that potential bottom has been put in. At you know, if that were the bottom at 15, the low closing was 15,870. If it's going to follow that pattern of last year, that could potentially be where the bottom could be put in again. If it's following the 2017 2018 declination, uh, that's where it could be put in right here in the bottom. It didn't really go below that level, yeah. That was the that was the low for that area. Then you had your double bottom, and then it was off from there. Uh, put that low in, and it kind of fell just like this. This price action looks very similar, or the price fell. And then went down one more time, a couple of little, you know, runoffs there. So it looks more like we have some more downside <clears throat> and a little bit further to go. And obviously, time frames are a month behind in terms of being December in 2017, 2018, but fell off, 
kind of bounced a couple of times and going for that ultimate lower low where, you know, could potentially start to maybe think about putting a bottom in uh, depending on where it goes to or it could hold up right here. We'll just have to wait and see. There's a lot of coins still locked up that can't be sold with the FTX debacle that's going on. Long term holders are holding. But is that enough to prop the market up? Uh, you know, a lot of the retail has been driven out of the market. Uh, a lot of institutional investors are not going anywhere near the market right now until this dust settles. So it'll be interesting to see if this price can hold up here uh, for a little bit more time. And there we go. Yep. So 2017, 2018. So from that time, let's look at that right there. From when it actually, you know, if we're looking at this level here, let's just say we're at this level or price and then, you know, recovered, then bounced down to here. Then let's just look at that. So that was really till you started moving. That was basically 127 days. So let's look at that. That's what I was trying to figure out. Where would 127 days, 130 days put us? So 127 to 130 days puts you right, yeah, around 28th of March, kind of like we were talking about the other day, the end of March. So, you know, as far as a bottoming pattern, you know, potential recovery based on 2017, 2018, you know, that's when you could realistically expect, um, you know, price to start recovering, put a bottom in and maybe, you know, start moving upwards again, depending on uh, obviously the economic climate during that time and, you know, uh, where the Fed is in the tightening cycle, the Fed is still coming out, uh, all of the Fed speakers and saying the markets are misinterpreting what we're saying, you know, don't be putting in any new highs anytime soon. Don't be thinking you can. We still got a lot of tightening to do. There's still a lot of inflation out there and we want tighter financial conditions, uh, things like that. So uh, assuming that what the Fed is doing can start to work through the system through the first quarter of next year and we can get some sort of stabilization where the Fed can pause, not necessarily reverse, but maybe pause by the end of Q1 next year, which would be March, then you could see the market start to recover, put that bottom in while that pausing narrative is played out through the first quarter of next year. So we have inflation print coming up, Fed's response to that in December. Um, and then of course you have the you know holidays where the markets like to rally because everybody wants to hit their bonuses and uh, things like that. And then you have Q1 where we're gonna really start to maybe understand the impact of the layoffs, you know, a lot of people are getting severance, things like that. So it takes a while for layoffs to really trickle into the economy. The people that are getting laid off are finding work elsewhere online, outsourced, you know, things like that. So uh, it's a very different economy this time, very different situation. So it'll be interesting to see how stubborn the labor market remains, how stubborn inflation remains, and what we really look like going into Q1. But right now, that's kind of where we're at. I think uh, the market is working on its next leg down. Uh, if Bitcoin obviously uh, can't hold this level, then, you know, we're looking at the next leg down 12 to 14, maybe consolidates there, then maybe down to 10 to 12. So it's just levels, a uh, controlled repricing, deleveraging uh, into uh, the end of the year and uh, waiting to see what we're going to be looking at next year. So those are the things I'm looking at. I'll see you in the next video.